so next I'm going to move on to um, Andy from um, NHS um, and talk a little bit about um, beyond the culture. How do we go about kind of assessing data quality um, and what benefits can that bring? Um, so Andy, do you want to tell us um, a little bit about um, who you are, where you come from and what work you've been doing? Yeah, uh, I'm Andrew X, Head of Data Quality at NHS Digital. I've been there about three and a half years. Prior to that, I worked in trusts as, as the one required to send in the information. So I got a little bit fed up of being told how poor my, my, my data quality was. So I thought I'll go, I'll go work for the centre and see if I can actually help um, providers to actually actually tackle that. I think an, an important distinction I think from a from a, a health service point of view is is that the data being captured to treat patients is not necessarily the, the data we're collecting that and, and that purpose. We're using it for secondary uses such as commissioning, service design and things like that. And that tends to keep, create a little bit of a disconnect and what is seen certainly within the NHS as a burden, an additional burden on treating the patients to collect all this additional information that the, the centre, as an NHS Digital and, and the people it collects it for, seem overly, you know, over exuberant about collecting. Um, and, I, and I imagine that's, that, that hasn't lightened any during, during the, the, the current pandemic. But one of, one of the, the things that NHS Digital is required to do as, as, as part of its, its statutory commitment is to, to regularly review and report on the quality of the data it collects. And that, that, that proved to be quite an initial challenge. How, how, do you, how do you measure, how do you find a consistent way to measure data quality, um, particularly where you may be talking 400 different, different organisations submitting it from exponential amount of, of different systems and different ways of, of capturing that, that, that data. So the first thing we did was we, we, we looked to the Dharma Book of Knowledge um, we, we looked at, at, at how Dharma defines data quality and data quality dimensions and then looked to see how we could build uh, a, a mechanism for, for measuring uh, data quality and reporting that back in, in a consistent manner that, that, that was meaningful to whoever was, 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 was actually looking at it. Uh, and that's where we created the Data Quality Maturity Index. And how was that received as a, as a kind of a new innovation for, for measuring data quality? I think people who look after data, I think we sometimes know in our guts what our quality of a data is, but having a kind of a standardised ways of assessing it, how did it go down with the people measuring the quality? One of, one of the one of, one of the big pieces of learning from from when it was um, was originally launched, and um, I'm going to say this before I joined, so that's that's a fault of my predecessors, was we, we we didn't we didn't adequately communicate this and and, and promote it. Um, it felt more it was done more as something that the centre NHS Digital was was um, kind of experimenting with and and wasn't using it wasn't necessarily promoting its use and how it might be used um, but then we started to look at we, we then started to find that people were using it and starting to rely on it so we then kind of did it back to front and then started to learn how people were using it and then how we could then better develop that to support that that use um, one of the other big pieces of learning of it because again just going back to that point I mentioned earlier, that this isn't the primary data, this isn't primary use data where it's 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 looking at, at the it's using the data captured during the treatment, but it's it's not in any sense the data we collect is used to to actually assess the quality of that care. There, had, there is that disconnect. It's just seen as data needed for the centre. We had to be we, we had to look at how having this metric and, and regularly reviewing it and looking for improvement opportunities actually does by default improve how they may capture that data and and indirectly improve the way that they're, they're working with it. One of the big pieces of learning though was that although it was there and it was available and some were using it, we found that we had to find incentives to get people to actually act on it. So whilst 
a provider may on a regular basis go be below a, what we saw as an acceptable threshold of about 85% may constantly review that. There was nothing in place to encourage them to actually do anything about it. And it's when we then started to look at, at what incentives we could define a, d design around that to encourage that, that we actually start to see some benefit. And unfortunately, the majority of the time, those incentives were money money based. So it's financial incentives. So they, they have within the health service thing called the, um, the, the Commissioning Quality Innovation Scheme or sequins, and it's a way of allocating additional money to, to a provider if they meet certain quality thresholds. And we managed to get our data quality maturity index included within that. So they had to achieve a certain level a certain threshold which we set at 95 percent and if they did they received the additional payments and that's really interesting to see the way that kind of linking quality into quite a strategic um concept like funding can can really drive the change um but i guess a question would be if you're talking to somebody who maybe hasn't got a structured way of analyzing data quality yet if you were starting out and assessing data quality what piece of advice would you give to people um, just starting out with that? I, th I think the key bit is, is, is to understand what the data quality issues are that, 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 that you're looking to address. Um, we, we've had initiatives within NHS Digital that just purely looked at coverage, so where they knew 200 providers should be submitting a particular data set and they were only receiving 100, all efforts were put on how to drive up that, that, that coverage. And a lot of effort and time was put into that and that that met one particular need it didn't in itself improve the quality of the data that was being collected it just meant you you that the, the people who wanted the data collecting were more assured so so that met one need but it didn't necessarily meet everybody needs so i think it i think it's it's for, for me the, the biggest challenge when you when you talk about data quality and particularly when people tell you that the data you're you're collecting or providing is of poor quality is how you get them to actually properly articulate that do they actually know what they mean by that term because data quality is such a ubiquitous term and it, it is a nice thing to blame things that you don't like the look of we we had a very common we, we had an instance where we were told that the, the data quality of a particular piece of data was was poor but what it turned out was it wasn't giving the answer that the individual wanted so where something was supposed to go down it had gone up so it was obviously poor quality data because they predicted that 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 amount of money would would go down and it's it's been able to get underneath that sort of thing and what is it that that you're actually wanting to describe and then and the the dharma dimensions do help with that is it completeness is it is it validity Accuracy is one we've never never attempted to look at at the moment because that's very difficult to do with just a single source of data. But yeah, um, I've got some very strong opinions on accuracy. Um, I'll put a link in the chat for anyone who hasn't seen our data quality framework. The government data quality framework, which we launched in December, pulls heavily on the Dharma dimensions that Andy's been telling us about. So there's some useful stuff in there about um, how to assess data quality, although it's something hopefully we'll be able to support people with a little bit more in the future um, but for the moment I'm just gonna say thanks Andy that was really helpful to know the journey that you've been on